Okay, this is going to be a fairly short video. We're just going to define our terms. Yes, this is still your teacher. This is my sweet, sexy, sultry voice. <clears throat> so, um, we're going to start by talking about kinematics. Kinematics is the study of how or what how things happen. We just know that it happens. We're going to study about why it happens when we talk about Newton's laws. But we're just going to study what's happening. This is what's happening to our object. And there's five terms, five or six terms that we deal with when we're talking about kinematics. Position. Where are you? Where are you standing? That's your position. Okay. So position is a specific location often given on an XY graph. So pause the video, rewind it, and write that down. It's often given, you know, if so-and-so is at X equals three meters, okay? So position is just where are you? Displacement, you moved from one spot, one position, to another spot, another position. How far did you go? That's your displacement. Now, dis displacement and distance are pretty much the same thing. The only difference is displacement is a vector quantity and the vector quantity tells us also the direction. So distance just says, hey, I went five meters. Displacement says, I went five meters in the positive x direction or I went five meters north or I went five meters up in the air. So it includes that distance component or that direction component. And then time. RSI unit for time is what? Do you remember? Yes, seconds. So then from those two, from those ideas, our position, our displacement, our time, we get, these are our base units. Again, remember we talked about base units and derived units. These are base units. Our velocity then is our change in position. Okay, so we're going to use that triangle we're going to use that triangle to represent change in. So displacement is your change in position. Okay, that triangle means change in. Whenever you see that in math, and it's always your final minus your initial. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Final minus initial. So it's your change in position over time. How far did you go per second? That's your velocity. Your acceleration is your change in velocity. How much did your speed change over time? Now notice I said velocity, speed. A lot of times we do use those two terms interchangeably also. Velocity is like displacement. So velocity and displacement are very similar to each other in that they are both vectors and they contain that that um, direction component to them. Um, speed and distance is just how far did you go and speed is just how fast are you going. Velocity is how fast are you going in a certain direction. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so in equations we have variables that substitute for these different terms. And if we're... <clears throat> talking about displacement or distance, we're going to use x. So that's going to be your displacement or your distance. If you see x naught and x final, that might mean your starting position or your final position. Okay, so x can also re represent your position, but x is a distance factor. Okay, so it's going to be measured in, what do we measure distance in? Do you remember? You should remember, because you already took a test on this. Yes, we measure distance in meters. Okay, so that's going to be in meters. We're going to have a whole bunch of different velocities, so it's kind of important to get those guys straight. Your initial velocity, that's your starting velocity. So we usually say VI or v naught, You'll see it both ways depending on what website you look at. Okay, so that means just that just means v initial, v original, or v at time zero. Okay, so that's when you're starting off. 
and then you have your final velocity, Vf, you have your average velocity, okay? Average velocity is often written V with a line over it, or they'll write V average. I'll probably write V average just because it's easier to type. I don't know how to make that symbol on my on my typing thing. Sorry, guys. Um, that's, you know, when when you drive from your house to school, it you know, you took a half an hour to cover 10 miles, so you averaged 20 miles per hour. But were you always going 20 miles per hour? No. So your average velocity is kind of your total distance divided by your total time. Okay? Total distance over total time. Your instantaneous velocity, your instantaneous velocity is your velocity at that instant. Okay, so it could also be a final velocity. Final velocity doesn't necessarily mean at the end. It means at the t end of the time interval. So you could have a whole bunch of different final velocities. And each final velocity can become a new initial velocity because you could start the time over. Your instantaneous velocity is your velocity. Like right at five seconds, how fast were you going? Your speedometer in your car gives you your instantaneous velocity. When you look down at the speedometer, it tells you you're going 60 miles an hour. It's telling you right now you're going 60 miles an hour. During your trip to school, you're not going 60 miles an hour all the time because there's stoplights. So sometimes you're going zero miles per hour. So that's why your average and your instantaneous are going to be different numbers. Instantaneous velocity, we'll see just V. But VF is sometimes our instantaneous velocity. But yeah, that's your velocity at a particular second. And if you were doing calculus, that would be the slope of the line at that certain point. We're going to do, do that a little bit in the next video, but we're not going to have any of those really complicated ones. You would do that if you were taking AP Calc B or C. Or AP C. All right, so instantaneous velocity. So we have initial velocity, fine where where we start final velocity where did we end our average velocity on average how far how fast were we going now this could be a weighted average so there are a couple problems on your pretest that has this as a weighted average so because you're not continually changing your speed okay so you may have to find a weighted average, and in a lot of your classes, that's how your grade is figured out. So we'll actually go over that in class. This class is not. This class is your total points divided by how many points were possible. And then your instantaneous velocity is your velocity at that time, and it can also be a final velocity. So, units. Since we are, our velocity was our change in position over time, correct? Then we measured our position in meters, our time in seconds. So guess what unit we use for velocity? Meters per second. You are going to have to convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second. So pay attention to units, see what they give you. Okay, last one, acceleration. Acceleration is your change in velocity over time. So remember how velocity was meters per second? Per second. Okay. So sometimes you'll see this as meters per second per second. But that's kind of awkward to write. And I think that's for those people that don't know how to do superscripts on there. But this one is conceptually correct. It's meters per second. Per second. So it's how fast are you changing your speed every second. So if I have an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared, I'm going 5 meters per second faster every second. So if I started at 0, my next one would be 5 meters per second, and then I'd be going 10 meters per second, and then I'd be going 15 meters per second. See how I'm getting 5 meters per second faster every second. So that's our unit 
for acceleration. Now, you will have negative accelerations, okay? A negative acceleration, in general, means you're slowing down. Not always, but in general, it means it's slowing down. Basically, acceleration is a vector also, and it has a direction. So if your velocity is this way, but your acceleration is in the opposite direction, your acceleration is going to be negative. If your initial velocity is up, but your acceleration is down, your acceleration is going to be negative. But if your velocity is down and your acceleration is going to be down, they'll both have the same unit or the same sign. Because signs in physics, this is very important. I'm going to put this on a new page all by itself. Positive and negative in physics show direction. So if you have opposite directions, you have opposite signs. Same direction, same signs. That's going to be a hugely important. Don't get hung up on, oh, it's negative, it's positive, it's a negative 9.8, it's a positive 9.8. Think of the direction everything's going, and then you'll be able to figure out, it should it be positive or should it be negative, and what does it mean to be positive and negative. Okay, well, that gets you started. That was basically just ideas. We're in the next video. We're going to go over the equations, and then we're going to go over the graphs.